Hey everybody, it's Josh here again. So today we're gonna to be talking about ransomware and then doing a live demonstration with our own custom built implementation. And just a quick disclaimer before we get started, this video is definitely for educational purposes and research purposes only. It's not intended for committing any kind of cyber crime or anything negative. It's for positive things like awareness and learning and all of that. And also I need to say the code we're running in this demonstration is really dangerous in the sense that it's actual ransomware. So if you wanna follow along and run the code, just make sure to do it in a dedicated virtual environment or some environment that's isolated that you don't care about. And don't forget to smash the like button if this seems really interesting to you. But yeah, so let's get started. Simply put, ransomware is just a special type of malicious software that goes through your computer, like locks up all your files, and then demands some kind of payment, usually in the form of cryptocurrency in exchange for the key to unlock your files. Usually there's pretty good instructions on how to make the payment because of course the criminals want their money. And then once you make the payment, the idea is they'll respond to your email or however with the key or the program you used to unlock the files that have been locked up. After making the payment to the criminals, they may or may not send you the key. It's in their best interest to send the key because it will kind of propagate the idea that if you pay the ransom, you'll definitely get your key. It doesn't really make sense for them to not return the key because then they can't keep using the same exploit, in my opinion anyway. According to these random websites, in 2020, there'll be over $20 billion worth of damages due to ransomware alone, with each business facing an average loss of $100,000. Ransomware can be very complex and elegant software, but there's kind of two main components to it. The first one being the delivery mechanism, like how to propagate the ransomware and get it on the actual computer to be executed. And then the other part, the other component is the encryption component, which uh, recursively crawls the file system and then just individually encrypts each file. The delivery mechanism can be as simple as putting a ransomware on a thumb drive and just throwing it in a parking lot and hoping someone picks it up and plugs it in and runs it to being as complicated it is using some kind of zero day exploit that is taking advantage of a vulnerability that no one knows about to remotely execute ransomware or propagate it on target systems. For our particular example, we're just going to focus on the actual ransomware itself. That is the portion that recursively crawls the file system and encrypts all the files as opposed to focusing on the delivery mechanism at all. So getting into how our ransomware works, if you want to follow along in code, make sure to download Visual Studio Community for free. And when you're installing it, make sure to select .NET Desktop Development. So now that we've installed Visual Studio Community, it's time to download our source code. So our particular ransomware proof of concept has two different sections to it. The first section is called the encryptor. Um, I'll put the links to these GitHub pages in the description, by the way. But the first part is called the encryptor, which is used to lock up all the user's files and demand a ransom. And then the decryptor is used to, uh, of course, unlock those files. So we'll download the code for the encryptor first. Just go to this page on GitHub. In the link in the description click code sorry and then we'll click download zip and i'm gonna put this um i'm gonna put this in a, a different folder that's not the desktop because we're gonna actually encrypt the desktop so if you're following along just go to the c drive and then just make a folder called safe folder and then just download it to here save it save it in the safe folder and then do the same thing for the decryptor go to decryptor code download zip and then i'm just gonna replace it because i already did it so download it into the safe folder and you can minimize this and then so we will go ahead and go to your c drive you can open up computer and then go to c drive and then go into your safe folder and then just go ahead and unzip both of these into the same folder here Actually, I'll just I'll just do it again. So we'll go encryptor, say extract all, and then just uh, allow it to go into this folder. And then same thing, uh, we can close that. And go to decryptor, extract all, extract. Close this. And so we're going to work with the encryptor first. That is the one that locks up all the files. So we'll open this encryptor open this and then before we open the solution go into this uh, windows forms app and then you have to unlock this file because visual studio code protects your computer or your windows protects it because it's like you know, source code from the internet so just right click it sorry go to properties and then down here say unblock and then just apply and okay and then go back one level again don't do this on your 
personal computer, do it inside a virtual me machine or some, some computer that you don't care about. It won't propagate, but it could delete your files. So, okay, after we've unlocked that, we'll go ahead and open the encryptor solution file, just right here. Visual Studio should open, say okay. And once this is open, expand this encryptor proof of concept over here and double click this encryptor.cs. And then our GUI loads up. This is a graphical user interface. Um, what the victim, quote unquote victim, will see after the encryption has taken place. So I wanna look at the code for this really quick. There's a couple different ways to get to it. You can go to view and then code or press F7, or you can just double click a, an empty space here to go to the form load code. And then we'll scroll all the way to the top um, the way I, I kind of built this, this is the only code you really have to um, look at if you want to customize it for your own needs. So for example, I'll just explain each one of these kind of variables so you, you know what it's for. You can just leave this as is if you want, but just as an explanation. Uh, this delete all originals, if this is true, once the files that are being ransomed or encrypted, once those are encrypted, the original ones are deleted. So if you were a real criminal per se, um, you would want to make sure this is set to true so the user can get their files back. These three variables, just um, they're pretty self-explanatory where, where you want to encrypt the files. If you only want to encrypt on the desktop, then you can set these two to false. Um, but if you want to encrypt all three areas, just leave them set to true. And the encrypted file extension, after the files are encrypted, encrypted, this extension will be appended uh, to kind of show that they have been encrypted and they're no longer you know, accessible in their normal fashion. This is the, the password. Our encryptor and our decryptor use um, uses symmetric encryption. It uses AES encryption, so the password should be the same on both sides. This is the Bitcoin address for the ransom. So for example, if we look at this again, that's what that's what's going to show up like down here. All right. And this Bitcoin ransom amount is set to one. That's what's going to show up here where it says N Bitcoins. So if you want to demand, you know, in our fake scenario, 10 Bitcoins, um, we would change this to 10 and then email address. Um, this is where after the after the victim has paid their ransom, they when you pay, when you send money in Bitcoin, with Bitcoin, you get a transaction ID, then you would email the transaction ID to the criminal. Um, so the criminal knows like which payment came from you specifically, so they can send you uh, the key that's applicable to your, uh, your situation. And again, don't do any of this in real life. Don't submit don't send ransomware to people and you know you know don't don't commit crime is, is what i'm trying to say so we're going to leave all these to true we're going to encrypt the desktop pictures and documents so instead of we can just run this from here um, but instead of doing that i want to actually do it outside of visual studio so we can see the files being encrypted more easily so what i'll do is i'll go to go to build and then we'll just clean this and say go to build again and then build solution and then we can see down here, it's one succeeded. So we're gonna minimize this for now. And then we're going to go, uh, this is our safe folder, remember? So we're gonna go into the encryptor inside here, Windows form app, and then we're go to, gonna go to bin and debug. And then this is our executable that does the actual encrypting. And I actually, I downloaded a bunch of kind of sample files from the internet here. So these three folders, this one's, this is, this is a desktop, of course, the My Documents folder, and then this is the Pictures folder. I just kind of download a bunch of random stuff from the internet um, just to kind of show that there, you know, we have some documents with some pictures and files. Like we can pretend this is my work. You know, I'm a nuclear physicist or something. And um, here's a simple text file also. It just has like, you know, just some files, you know, they're clearly files are working. So after our ransomware ones, I'll run this right now. So this is the ransomware. It's gonna go through and encrypt everything. You'll notice it's working in the desktop first. It's adding, it's encrypting, then adding this jcrypt file extension um, on all the files that it has encrypted. So I'll just let this kind of go and do its thing Looks like now it's moved on to the pictures, encrypting them. 
And now when it finishes, we get this nice graphical user interface for the poor victim, uh, ripped Lamau, your files. Uh, it, as the encryption was happening, it was counting the files. Your files 34 has been encrypted in order to recover your data, send a Bitcoin here and email your transaction ID to here. So once they close this and they go back to their their desktop, for example, they'll see like all their stuff has been encrypted. This icon is probably on the public folder, which is why it wasn't encrypted. But you'll see there's one more, an additional file here that says recover files. Um, again, this is part of our program. When you open it, it just uh, reiterates what the GUI said the red screen, all your stuff has been encrypted, send one Bitcoin here. And then the encryption log, it just um, shows what has been encrypted on their computer. So getting into how to recover these, we'll close this out and we'll go, we'll go back to our safe folder, safe folder. And you can see why I didn't uh, put the source code in like our application on the desktop because it would have encrypted itself and like who, who knows what's gonna happen at that point. But so we'll go to our decryptor now, open this up and we'll open we don't have to unblock anything in this one so we'll we'll just open the solution straight up i'll show you the source a little bit expand this uh oh double click program.cs and we'll scroll down to our variables that we care about so again this is the section that um, you don't have to care about anything else just you can deal with this to customize it to your needs you just specify um, this is if you want to after the decryption process happens if you want to get rid of the encrypted file you'd set this to true these three pretty self-explanatory where you want to run the decryption from I'll let the decryptor know what the file extension is like which file type to look for and then the password oh this should be decrypt password but um, you can change this it doesn't matter you can leave it but the password um, this should match the encryptor password uh, if it doesn't match again I didn't um, this is kind of proof of concept level code so I don't know what's going to happen if you try to decrypt with the wrong password I think it might corrupt the file so again just do this in a sandbox environment so we'll just uh, clean and build this you can leave everything as is if you don't uh, feel like changing it. We'll build it. Minimize this. Uh, again, this is our, we're gonna go to our safe folder. We'll go to the decryptor, decryptor, and then we'll go to the POC and then the bin debug. And then this is our decryptor right here. So I'll open these folders back up just so we can kind of watch it happen. The decryption process is like much quicker. So we'll just double click this. Oh, by the way, by the way, um, I should try to open one of these. So we'll, I'll try to open this simple text one. This was just like a simple text file. I opened it last time. So we'll say open. Um, I'll just try to open it with notepad. And you can see that it, it just, you know, it's just scrambled for some reason. It came out as a lot of Chinese characters and maybe some what looks like Korean ones and some other random stuff. But yeah, and then this uh, this plutonium.jpg.jcrypt. This was a picture of a like plutonium ingot or something. So I'll try to open this. You should be able to open it in Paint. So I'll, I'll try to open it in Paint. It's just gonna be like you can't do that because it's encrypted. Doesn't know how the computer doesn't know how to deal with it. Just wanted to show that they're actually encrypted. So if we double click our decryptor, has the right password. It's gonna step through and just decrypt everything real quick and they're recovered and then we have our plutonium ingots and nuggets all of my not mine is random stuff but all of this all of these fake research documents are all decrypted and then we see on our desktop we have a decryption log it just says 34 files have been decrypted and it, it just shows a list of all the files that were recovered so there's one last thing i wanted to show so the encryptor portion of this application, it's technically a form of malware. It's it's ransomware, so it's a form of malware. But because it's customized, it won't be able to be picked up by antivirus engines that use signature-based detection. Or if there's an anti-malware engine that use some, uses some kind of like heuristic analysis or behavior analysis, it could possibly pick up and detect our application. So if we go to virus total and we upload our uh, the encryptor ransomware. So this is just, uh, I just browsed to like our safe folder. Actually, I'll, I'll just do it again. Yeah. So you can follow along. So go to the safe folder 
encryptor, encryptor, Windows form, bin, debug, and then just select the exe and then we'll upload it. And then virus total will take whatever you upload and evaluate it against a whole bunch of different anti malware engines. And um, some of the engines will have I'm assuming they have some kind of virtual environment or some kind of sandbox, they can open the file and, and observe the behavior of it. So I'll just let this uh, continue evaluating real quick. So it looks like uh, virus total checked it against 70 total, a total of 70 different anti malware engines and 17 of them detected th that this file was malicious. And we can see like the, the type, we can see like g generic heuristic ransomware, generic heuristic ransomware, Trojan ransomware, generic ransomware, malicious confidence of 70%. Um, basically, we can assume that these these 17 anti malware engines that that caught this, we can assume that it probably opened up this executable in some kind of environment and and observed the behavior of it, it observed the the ransomware crawling the file system and encrypting the files one by one. And then these other remaining like however many this is like 60 or so 50 or 60 anti malware engines that didn't detect it, we can assume these are probably using some kind of signature based detection. And because our malware is totally customized, they they just were unable to catch it. So I just thought that would be kind of an interesting to, to show interesting thing to show. So if you if you want to run this in your uh, your own virtual environment, just make sure you, you might want to consider disabling the anti malware, but I could run it in mine, like a vanilla version of Windows and it didn't get picked up by anything. So yeah, just wanted to show that. So yeah, that's basically how ransomware works. And by the way, if something didn't work properly on your end, like you couldn't get the source code to run properly or something, just let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to help you work through it. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps my channel out. And if you know anyone else who might think this is interesting, go ahead and share it with them. I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Kizu ga arimasu ne.